Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Uh, um. <laughs> How you doing, RC? David McLean, it is always a pleasure to talk to you. I have one of the very rarest opportunities in the fact that I've been a fan of yours from childhood, and now I get to call you my friend in adulthood. Thank you so much for allowing me that honor. Yes, well, thank you. I enjoy seeing you at the live WOW matches. It's fun coming to the WOW matches, LA Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con. Uh, did you ever think at 13 years old, being at the Boys and Girls Club in the frozen tundra of your youth going, you know what, there's not enough women's wrestling. Let's put on an entire women's promotion with the gorgeous ladies of wrestling of GLOW that eventually became the natural progression of what we call WOW Women of Wrestling. I didn't think it at 13, but I was exposed to the wrestling back in Indianapolis, Chicago area, and something triggered me. I was watching Sandy Partlow wrestle and Princess Jasmine. We were at her state fair. And yes, it's colder than heck in Indianapolis, Chicago, and Detroit in the winter. But it was a hot, hot July or June. We were at a state fair. And I knew at a young age there was something wrong because Sandy Partlow and Princess Jasmine couldn't change clothes and be with the guys in a separate area. They, they were ostracized. And uh, maybe that was a seed of my eyes saying, hmm, they're not treating the women's wrestling very fairly. And um, I never thought of GLOW, though, until I hit my 20s. And um, GLOW was a 10. It was a great, great event. Um, it'd be on today if it didn't break up. The band broke up. The Beatles broke up too early. And... Um, so I always had an itching to get back into women's wrestling and do it correctly. And we started it in 2000 and got hammered by 9-11 when the ad market went down. And um, because Jeannie Buss had come and seen a live WOW show, she knew it was special, just like you come and see it, RC. So at that point, you know, she said, we got to bring this back when the timing is right. And we brought it back. We got on Access TV. We found a home that was able to showcase what we want to have WOW become. And, of course, when Access was sold and it had new owners, we weren't in the picture. And um, we were fortunate enough to find Paramount. And now the vision that has been, you know, as you say, because you're a fan of GLOW, for some 30 some years is going to take place because the platform is established to showcase women's wrestling properly. You know, people don't remember glow wasn't on in over much, maybe a hundred and some markets. That's it. And they all started didn't renewing over all those four year periods. The reason everyone remembers it back in those days, there wasn't the peripheration of programming. You know, you didn't have cable. You didn't have, you, you just had your four basic stations, ABC, CBC, NBC, Fox. Fox wasn't even in. Fox started as Glow, as Glow hit its third year, I think, or fourth. So um, that's why everyone remembers the name so easily. But... but the natural progression is wow, and we are talking about wow because wow is today. That That's right. Thanks for blooping it back into that. But even then when wow started in 2000, it was only like 101 markets. So this is the first time in history, history, that women's wrestling is going to be seen nationwide. That's pretty special. It's absolutely phenomenal. I commend you for all the hard work that you've done and the perseverance that you've gone through. And Jeannie Buss being a part of this. I mean, she knows what she's talking about. She does own the Lakers. Yes, she does. <laughs> this is her side hustle, if you will. But uh, I'll tell you this. The Lakers will always be her dad's legacy. And this will be Jeannie's legacy. 
because without her, why wouldn't have happened again? And why wouldn't be having the opportunity to have this platform to showcase women's professional wrestling? And um, that's a fact because all the other wrestling promotions could have done it in five seconds and they could have done it correctly and they chose not to. And we have an opportunity to differentiate ourselves in the marketplace and hopefully do it right. You've been one of those fans. They've been screaming for over six years to bring us more women's wrestling, better women's wrestling, and showcase it. And we're just the benefactors of all that fan enthusiasm to deliver it now. And now you have some incredible talent. Candy Crush, I believe, is going to be the breakout star this season. Uh, Lana Star's new, new faction with Penelope Pink and Vicky uh, uh, McCoy. And then uh, Miami Sweet Heat, just that faction alone is phenomenal. The Beast is returning, and she's incredible. Uh, you're able to keep it family-friendly without over-sexualizing the women and objectifying them, and I think that's going to be really appre appreciated uh, by the fans. Well, I agree with you full-heartedly. It's just like if you like hockey, you don't need fighting in hockey. If you like women's wrestling, you don't need to... Um, degrade the women to present it. You should lift them up. And that's what we do. And um, I think you hit it perfectly. We're going to deliver it the right way. And um, you've been to the live matches and you've seen our fan base. And even though it's only limited to LA at this time, um, the amount of parents that are bringing their kids to see WOW, the amount of young women between seven and you know 14, um, that are in the front rows cheering on their favorite WOW superheroes is totally unique to today's current wrestling. The other big ones don't have that audience, that grassroots pull to those young kids that we do. And I remember Jungle Girl's young son at the time coming to the ring and being and sitting ringside, and now he's almost an adult. And That's he right. still comes and supports his mom. Yes, and uh, the fans will be introduced to Americana, whose um, son, Levi, also attends the matches to watch his mom. It's very a uh, proud, proud moment when you get to see his shining face, watch his mom in there battling. And he's, I think he's three or four years old. We saw him with, uh, with uh, Steffi Slay's mom for a little while, who also works for a while. Yes, but he, he, I, he's six. I'm hesitating. I thought he was 10. Because he's so mature and well behaved, and it's somebody else's son that I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's so many kids running around the Wow events you don't know. Yeah, I, I'm thrilled that that you found this spot with CBS and Paramount, and that it's finally given the credit 35 plus years after it's well deserved for you to realize that women have you have their spotlight and the emotion. That, that is given to them. And the Heavy Metal Sisters, a name that's been revitalized after 35 years. You know, Americana, a name that's been revitalized after 35 years. Randy Rara, after 20 years, the name has been revitalized. You know, it shows that not only do the names have longevity, but the personas do as well. Well, you mentioned that, and, and, and the uniqueness is the individuals participate in let's pick a name that personifies who you are key to rush of course her name comes because she holds the 440 record in college um, miami sweet heat whom you mentioned the carlson twins they are from nebraska they love the midwest but they traveled to florida fell in love with the nightlife of miami and i became miami sweet heat um jungle girl of course from her background in the Amazon with her parents. And so Candy Crush and her background being a great boxer. So everyone that has a character name is really who they are in WOW. And I think that's unique and special also. We don't go far from who each individual is. It's basically taking your persona and cranking it up to 11. Yes, some might say 12, but yes, you're right. <laughs> let's go 15 by the end of the season <laughs> all right we might do that <laughs> uh, 
people always ask me, what's David McLean like? And two things I always tell them is as a person, David McLean is a wonderful person because he's always been kind to everybody, the fans, myself, you know, and everyone that ever uh, meets him. And secondly, if I ever need an acronym or financial advice, David McLean is the person I need to contact because there was always a joke that you were cheap hanging out in the phone booth as your office. But I know that you are able, you know, you are able to be a financial wizard when need be. Well, I don't know about wizard. <laughs> some might really differ if they see some of the money I've wasted with bad decisions. But uh, thank you for that. Um, but that phone booth scene and today is it came, it came about out of, out of being a true acronym of who I am. I watch the pennies well, and I, I don't want to overspin where not necessary. Uh, at this point, would the would an updated joke of that be the brick cell phone from from 1987? <laughs> since there are no more phone booths, there are, there are no more phone booths. But I cannot mention publicly where we stay in L.A. But there is a phone booth in that hotel, and they've been dying me to, for me to get in it and do a um, a throwback to me in a, a phone booth. That would definitely be fun for a Halloween episode. <laughs> hey, pretty good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've come up with with su such a wonderful array of characters and finding them. And then Selena Majors, who was also known as Bambi, uh, being one of your head trainers, who's absolutely incredible and one of the sweetest ladies there ever is. It's that Southern charm that's there because I know she can get down and dirty, but she's still a very nice lady. Uh, take us through that relationship with Selena and how she became involved with WOW and, and the head trainer. Selena's the creative force behind WOW. I, I listen to her more than anyone. And um, she's the guiding light. We met after uh, GLOW, and I left GLOW along with 28 or so many of the wrestlers that participated in it. And uh, I was scrambling to put together a tour nationwide, uh, which was named POW, for Powerful Women of Wrestling Tour. She was on the bus, and the, you know that thing was a fast, fast lesson in disaster. But we were going from one city to the other one night, and I sat next to her, and I met her through Vern Gagne, and I think she was only eighteen years old. And I said, "What's your dream for wrestling? Why are you in it?" And she said, "I want to see women's wrestling, you know, be like the men's wrestling. I want us to be as big as Arn Anderson and." the four horsemen, et cetera, et cetera. And I listened to her vision. And uh, it's like I can relive the whole thing right now. I'm sitting here. She's on my left. The cold, icy bus window is, uh, is next to her. And I just, after I listened to her talk for 20 minutes, I said, well, stay with me because we're going to do it. We're going to put women's wrestling on the map. And um, here it is. And you do have your enforcer in Vicky McCoy. <laughs> he is your Arn Anderson. Lynn McCoy, fans will have to get into several of the WOW episodes to, to meet her on screen. But um, she's a force to be reckoned with. And um, the fans will see some parallels here to Selena's bus ride with her saying something about uh, the four horsemen and what happens in WOW down the road as the season progresses. Well, I think people are looking forward to her and Sweet Heat and Candy Crush and everybody else the, that's returning and a new member of, uh, of the organization. And did, the you big... see, did you see uh, Foxy Fierce when you were there live? Foxy Fierce was incredible. I yeah. mean, how about the drop kicks and the flying? I mean, it's unbelievable. When I saw Foxy, I was reminded of a line from Fletch when he was playing uh, basketball, where he said, "You know, Fletch is six foot five, six foot eight with his afro," and that's what I instantly thought of Foxy because she's about five ten, and then with the hair, she's about six five. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the puffs. <laughs> yeah, she's phenomenal. Everybody put on a tremendous show. Uh, Sofia Lopez is back uh, as the world's greatest attorney. And she's yeah. got a uh, a long list of clients. Yes, I have to deal with her a lot, so <laughs> he's back. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're still enjoying this. You know, you've never been uh, broken by the fact of the setbacks of whether it was nine eleven 
or COVID happening and slowing things down, you know, you were still able to forge forward. And I commend you greatly for that. Thank you. Uh, people mention that all the time. I think I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I just had a vision and I've stayed with it uh, because I believe in it and I'm passionate about it. And I mentioned Jeannie Buss is my partner. No one's more passionate about Wild than her also. And we're both very passionate and persistent individuals. So um, WOW, as, as the brand for you, the fans, is in good hands because it has two owners that love it. And they're both friends. And we're going to take care of it and provide it its stewardship, if you will. So it's a successful brand that lasts way beyond our years. That's the goal. And um, we're just, been, we're, we're lucky. We're lucky. I don't look at 9-11 and the syndication market died and I couldn't afford to keep the show going and all these hurdles and access TV uh, being sold. I don't look at them as hurdles that were negatives. I just look at them as events that occurred and we just stayed the course. And um, I never looked at it like, God, is that gonna take 30 some years to make it? Because we haven't made it yet, in my opinion. We still got a lot to do. We're the little new kid on the block that's offering the wrestling fans um, and the combat fans something that's unique, a different outlet for wrestling and we just hope that they like it. Well, for them to catch up, they can go to the CW uh, Seed and Pluto TV to watch classic matches of WOW. Good point, RC. You're right. That's right. A little taste before they see the brand new 52-week episodes. So it's going to be 52 weeks. It's going to be a continuous uh, year-round evolution. Just in, just in that, RC. Just in that. That's never been done for women's professional wrestling. Um, Glow is only 26 weeks. Wow on Axis, as I said, over the period of seasons equaled 32 episodes. But it was never said, let's do more than 12 at a time, eight at a time. It was treated like a, a, a regular television show in terms of its components. Paramount is the one that saw the vision of Jeannie Buss saying this could be a long-term sports league, a franchise, if you will. And if we get into it, let's not just dip our toes. And that's the benefit that WOW was in all these, as you said, hurdles or steps that we were proving along the way. Now we've got that platform. So fans, if you don't watch, don't blame anybody. You got to get behind the program now. I'm calling out you, the fans of women's professional wrestling. Watch the programming. Tell your friends. Do all that social stuff that builds the audience. And let's make it happen. And RC, you're, you're one of the champions. From day one that I met you, you've been raising the flag on what we've been trying to do. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And, Thank you for having me. That's more, uh, that, it's my, it's my thanks and appreciation to you for, for allowing me in. No, you know, I want to make you proud and as well as all, all your listeners and fans of what you do and wrestling fans. Um, but guys, we got the platform now. We got to make it happen. You got to watch it, talk about it, brag about it. You got to expand the viewership. So we need your help to make wild a success that it should be. Well, WOW does premiere on September 17th, and there are more tapings coming September 21st, 22nd, and 23rd at the Belasco Theater. The brand new belts are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, once we get the, the new year established, and WOW off and running with CBS and, and the affiliates, uh, people want you to do the phone booth shtick as, as a reminder. Would there be a revitalization of a version of the glow crown, kind of like a queen of the ring for a wow crown? I don't know. All I'll say is anything's always possible. Yeah. Uh, the audition process, because I know you guys do an annual audition process and then have a training facility. Uh, you've gone to Miami. It's been in Los Angeles and Las Vegas and around the country. Will there be more auditions coming up? As, this, as the year progresses. 
Great, great point, RC. First of all, our Miami auditioning for wild tryouts that we were going to host there were canceled due to COVID. And I'm sorry about that. But that is how we did meet the Carlson twins um, who are now in, in WOW because they submitted for that event. And it was only canceled maybe a week, 10 days before it was to take place due to the you know, uptick in COVID. So we have not yet done what that was going to do, which would be a national search for new talent. But I can tell you we are going to do it again. Um, when you see Candy Crush, whom you mentioned, that came out of holding tryouts in L.A. And Candy Crush and Americana and Foxy Fierce came to those tryouts. And those are three athletes from college that came in, got into the ring, and demonstrated they have the tools to be you know, fine-tuned to become great ladies professional wrestlers and wild superheroes. So we are going to do that again, RC. And we do offer the only one in the entire country exclusive all-female wrestling training school. And I think that's important because um, I've had professional wrestlers that have come from the independent wrestling circuit and come to WOW to train and tell us that the idea to do it just for women is so important because it gives them a safety that they don't have um, in a culture they don't have on the independent circuit when trying to train for this sport. So we're providing a safe haven for those women that want to train to become women wrestlers. And um, it's here in Los Angeles. And um, pretty soon we'll be announcing a new home for it right off the 405 freeway. Well, I live right off the 405 freeway. So hopefully it comes a little south towards like the Long Beach area. <laughs> Excellent. I can tell you that's going to be happening. Wonderful. So maybe you'll allow me to do a, uh, a school visit so we can do some more promotional no, stuff. No doubt. I will welcome that. I appreciate it because, you know, I'm going to respect the wrestlers because it's not going to be one of those dirty situations. I've seen stuff like that, and I, I'm not appreciative of it. No, it's going to be a very prominent location. The deal's already done. I just can't announce it yet. Well, we'll wait till halfway through the season, and hopefully that'll be our Christmas gift is finding out when, uh, when we can go. All right. Fantastic. David, remind everybody about, you know, not only the website and the social media stuff, but again, the 17th is where we can, where we can begin watching. Wow. Uh, after the episode is aired, would it also be moved to the CW seed and then eventually Pluto TV? Or is it I, just... I would, well, first off, we're doing live events now. As we move into the second season, they'll be closer to the premieres, but we wanted to do them early now. So... Those programs are being put together now. They debut nationwide Saturday, September 17th. Saturday, September 17th. Wow. Women wrestling debuts nationally in the landscape of professional wrestling changes forever on that date. So that's the number one thing to put on your calendar. And then if you wanted to catch up, as you said, RC, you can go to the CW app and you can go to Pluto and catch up on past episodes of WOW Now. And socially, you can go to W-O-W-Wow-E, WOW Entertainment, W-O-W-E.com, and check out WOW and meet your superheroes on the website. And um, very soon, they'll, they'll have up there, it's not up yet, some spot in there to put in a zip code, and you can find out in the local listings of where WOW is airing in your area. Um, in case any of you are traveling and going to different cities, you can always catch WOW. Uh, let, let's and hope the that... social media platforms easy. It's all at WOW superheroes. Everything is WOW superheroes. It, it's it's that's the one name that's consistent on social, whether well, it's Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Even your villains are heroic in the, in WOW. Yes. Some of their misdeeds are misplaced, but we'll see what happens. 
<laughs> well, I'm not going to give any spoilers away other than the new belts are absolutely gorgeous and the talent has skyrocketed just from the from the two tapings that I've been to this season. Thank you. I appreciate that. We hope we do it right. And we're still listening. So any advice you and the fans want to give us, we're all ears. I'm looking forward to it, David McLean. It is always a pleasure chatting with you. I will see you in person again soon. And congratulations on all the well-deserved success that you are achieving. Thank you, RC. Not done alone, I'll tell you that. I got a great team. Thank you.